All right, guys, so remember some terminology to remember is clean side versus dirty side, right? Just to keep everybody on the same page. So clean side is always the painted side, and the dirty side is always the undercarriage. This makes things a lot easier for guys if they haven't seen the scene yet, pulling out the operation. For example, you say two struts on the clean side. I already know I'm going to put two struts on the painted side versus a dirty pullback, which would be two struts on the dirty side or the undercarriage, and then tying off to an anchor point like a vehicle or a tree and then I anchor back to the vehicle and pulling against those struts. So remember, clean side versus dirty side. Aaron, where are you setting up over there? Communicating to each other, trying to here, match, right match your locations where the struts are, so you're not gonna twist the vehicle once you start pinching it and trying to lift. Also be a good opportunity to, to remember size up plans and stabilization, right? That FTS model up. So given a good size up over the radio, which is going to include number of vehicles, severity of damage, do you have any uh, trapped occupants, are you going to need extrication, naming command if it's going to expand and move into a tactical channel. And then as far as plans, you always want to have plans as a plural, have a plan A and a plan B. And then communicating those plans to your crew and then the next arriving officer. And always remember if you're if you're starting with plan A, for example, you're going to pop a windshield and take a patient out the windshield on a vehicle on its side, for example, like plan A. If that doesn't work and you move into plan B, which is going to be roof flap down, for example, you should always be thinking about plan C. And then communicating that with the officer or the next crew as well. And then stabilization. Remember, in stabilization, we have two types of stabilization. We have initial stabilization and advanced stabilization, right? You see the chocks on the ground over here. There's chocks curbing the voids between the ground and the vehicle on the other side, on the clean side, that's always your BLS before ALS, right? You're not going to put drugs in a patient without taking a blood pressure and such. That's the way I look at it. So you want to fill those voids between the vehicle and the ground, and that can prevent the vehicle from rolling and make it safe enough in some situations to put a, to put a rescuer in the vehicle and assess a patient. And then you stabilize accordingly. This is why we do the plan to communicate the plans to the arriving crews. This way, struts and straps don't get in the way of pieces and parts coming off the vehicle. So remember, SPS, size up, plan, stabilization. And remember, always have multiple plans and communicate those plans to your crew and the arriving officer as well. Get everybody on the same page. And then when guys have a task, give them a task, give them an assignment, and make sure they stay on that assignment. So on this vehicle we're going to lift, we're going to pretend that we have a patient trapped under the uh, passenger side door there, partially ejected, so we're going to lift right there. So remember, if you lift an inch, you crib an inch. So we're going to have a member calling the lift from a visible point in the front, where he can get eyes on the two lifters, the guys that are on each jack, and then we'll have him calling it to the lifters, and then we'll have members that are pushing the cribbing in to capture the progress, right? When there's a life at stake, every inch that we get this vehicle off the patient, we want to capture that. This way, if a jack slips and such, we don't lose any of that progress. We're there to make the scene better. We don't want to make it worse for them. Ready? Let's go lift dirty. Up on dirty. Up on dirty. Okay, both up. Capture progress. We'll have multiple members on scene. We'll remember we lift an inch, crib an inch. And try to uh, consider the trajectory of this vehicle. Like, which way is it going to go? If we're downhill, we need to make sure that if the back end is downhill, we, we got it staked to the ground or tied off. Okay, stop. And then we can read the, the, uh, the tape on the jacks and see how far up we have. I'm about half an inch from being able to pin it. Okay. Well, and do we need to pin it if the jacks are holding the vehicle? Absolutely not. These ones are rated, but if we needed to, if you wanted to reset. Perfect. Okay. So let's just say at this point we've lifted. How much? What's your number on your jack there? So we've lifted. About four inches of throw left. Powers, how much you got? Seven. Okay, so remember, we're going to have to do that if we're on a hill. We want to lift the vehicle straight up and not traject.
trajectory of the hill, right? We want the vehicle to be as horizontal and calm as we can. Okay, so at this point, if the people rescuing the victim can pull the victim out, we would do so. So a thing to notice here is on this strut here, we were concerned about the bottom of the vehicle right here, trying to pitch this way. So what we did was we had to tend this ratchet strap. Normally when we lift a vehicle, we need to loosen the leases, these ratchet straps right here. We need to normally have these open because this is attached to a fixed position, right? The base stays and this is leaving. So if we were to leave this tight and then lift, this would become like a guitar, guitar string. We don't want to break that, right? So normally, what we do is we have these open. But Greenwood made a good point. And as this vehicle is leaving, it started to wander that way. And that's where our patient is. We we're there to make things better for him, right? So what we did is he had this tendon. So he gave it a little bit of slack. And then he just eyeballed this as we lifted. And then as we lifted and this became tighter, we would stop the lift. Line this up, tend this ratchet strap and let it open it up one click at a time and let it lift. This way we had a little bit of progress capture so the bottom of this car wouldn't ring the bell and swing out towards the patient. So these are all things that you gotta you gotta improvise, adapt, and overcome as we do stuff like this. We don't do this a lot, but we've got a lot at stake when we do an operation like this. So remember trajectory, which way is the vehicle gonna go? Which way does it wanna go? This is already downhill. It tends to uh, want to roll downhill. Remember, if a vehicle rolls, the wheels and the suspension are often compromised. So in this vehicle, this will help prevent it from rolling. But oftentimes, these wheels are more wrecked as it's rolling. So we have to be able to capture the progress of which way it's going to go.